Welcome to Power Core Productions and Podcastings. I'm your host, Teron Harrington. Back to hit you with another video. And today, we're going to be kicking off our morning series with What If Sasuke Uchiha Was a Girl? Naruto Yokai Part 3. As always, I want to thank everyone who is a part of Power Core Productions and Podcastings. Thank you for your support. Cannot do it without you. You guys make the channel grow. You guys make the core grow. You guys are the absolute best, amazing, best fans I could ever have. Thank you for your support with the channel, its growth as of late, with the rebooting of the Naruto High School DXD series, with what if Deku was a Power Ranger. Thank you for the massively great feedback that I'm getting with what if Deku were trained by Master Roshi. And stay tuned for everything that I have coming out with Power Core Productions and Podcastings. Now, like I said before, as far as Wednesday's video, Wednesday's video is going to be a one video day simply because I have things that I do every Wednesday. So trying to get out two videos would be a little difficult to say the least. So instead, what I am going to do for Wednesday going forward is that usually I would have a video exclusive on Saturday. That was the plan. But seeing as how I have a free space on Wednesday, what I'm going to do instead is that on Wednesday, that's going to be one video, and that's simply going to be what if Naruto was in high school DXD, and that video is going to come out Wednesday afternoon. So that'll basically be your one video for the day. That'll just be the afternoon series, whatever it might be, you know. So, in the future, after we finish What If Naruto Was in High School DxD, whatever video that I do in the afternoons, if it falls on a Wednesday, then you'll just get that video that day. So, no two videos, just one. And as far as the Saturday video, not sure if I'm going to make it simply because Saturdays, I like to try to take some time off. You know, like, I enjoy making the content. I have no problem making the content. But, you know, sometimes I want to have a day or two off to kind of relax and, you know, just unwind from a week's worth of video making. So, if I do one video on Wednesday, you know, that's kind of what I'm going to do. Then I'm probably not going to do one video on Saturday. So, the way it'll be is you'll get a video, two videos on Monday, two videos on Tuesday... One video on Wednesday, two videos on Thursday, and then two videos on Friday. And for the most part, I'll just take Saturdays and Sundays off. Now, every now and then, maybe I'll drop a video on Saturday. Maybe I won't. Don't expect it to be a regular thing, you know, because Saturday, that's usually a day that I like to take off, take to myself. Plus, I'm a huge football fan, so you already know college football Saturdays. NFL football on Sunday, you know, those days are my days. So that's just how I like to rest and do things. So that's something you might want to think about going forward. But other than that, those are all the announcements that I have. Stay tuned for this afternoon's video of What If Naruto Was in High School DXD, Season 2, Part 2, Rise of the White Dragon. But anyway, we're going to get straight into today's video. So as always, sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. The first few months for Team 7 would not go entirely smooth, and for once it wouldn't be because of Naruto. It would instead be the rivalry that had been built up between Satomi Uchiha and Sakura Haruno, as there was no love lost between the two Kanoichi. Many training sessions often saw the pink-haired girl sparring with the Uchiha, putting in real effort and determination to defeat her long-standing rival, and prove her superiority once and for all. This Sakura would have changed much more from the one in the original timeline. Having no male Uchiha, or any boy for that matter, truly stand out and catch her attention, she had time to develop her training and her skills. Of course, she did not become a powerhouse over time, but still she proved to be capable, adept, and a rather formidable foe, Satomi often seeing that she had a flair or two for Genjutsu, although she needed a point in the right direction. Ultimately, Satomi would get the win time and time again, 
angering Haruno to no end. Kakashi and Naruto would often stand on the sides not getting involved as the two would continue to beat on one another over and over. After some time had passed, Naruto would be feeling a bit agitated himself. Tired of doing D-rank missions in the village, he wanted to prove and show what he could do. And so, while in a meeting with the third Hokage, Naruto himself would want to go on a much more serious mission. The third Hokage seeing the earnest within Naruto, as well as seeing the growth of Team 7, albeit begrudgingly, would decide to give them a mission something that he felt would be comparable for the three Ginin. It would be a sea rank mission to the land of waves as they would be bodyguards on a journey. Walking into the room with the third Hokage and Team Seven would be the escort, none other than Tazna, the bridge builder. As the team would assemble their gear and prepare for their first trip out of the village, Naruto and Satomi would look at each other with pride, thinking that they had taken one step closer to their ultimate goals. Sakura were also happy to be on this mission as well, noting that she were finally going to get a chance to be more than just the second to that Uchiha. As the mission would begin and the three would make their way out of the village, Naruto would be walking closer to Kakashi simply talking about things like training and other aspects. This Naruto were not too dumb or not too unto the know when it came to things. So he found a lot of solace in talking with Kakashi's Hatake, mainly being that he were the only other boy on the trip. There was Tazuna, but Naruto didn't care much for him. Instead, it would be the two girls walking ahead looking at each other eerily. As they were making their way forward on the trail, they would see a puddle of water, which would be a bit odd since it hadn't rained in the last few days. Nevertheless, they wouldn't pay it much mind. However, Kakashi would give it a quick once over. From out of nowhere, chains would move from out of the forest area, wrapping around Kakashi as two mist Chuni would arrive. Yanking on their chains respectively, Kakashi would appear to be ripped to shreds. As the tuning would turn their attention to the Genin, Satomi moving into action effortlessly. Meanwhile, Sakura would be stumbled for just a moment, finding her arm getting cut by one of the missed Chuni, before delivering a roundhouse kick of her own, which were rather strong, sending him back a few feet. As Sakura would weave the hand signs for the water style water bullet, she would blast a decent sized chunk of water, shooting at the tuning and distracting them just long enough so that Sakura could land another devastating assault. She would cast the clone jutsu and two more Sakuras would rush ahead, the mist tuning getting his bearings together as he would slash at the two Sakuras who would appear to be illusions. As the third one would appear, he would assume that it were an illusion as well, not putting up his guard and as a result paying the price, as it would be the real Sakura as she would deliver a devastating haymaker, rocking him across the field and straight into a tree, giving him a concussion in the process. For what it was worth, when it came to strength, Sakura had a good decent chunk in terms of raw power. Her punches could land hard, and Satomi had felt a few of them. Not that it mattered in the end. Naruto would create a shadow clone, and they would go and bind up the other ones that were remaining, tying them to a tree as the three would look to themselves. Tazuna was surprised to see that they had done such a good job. Kakashi would then appear from the forest and congratulate them on a job well done. All three of his students performed admirably. However, just as in canon, Kakashi would turn to Tazuna and ask for the truth about the mission, knowing that if it were just a regular C-rank mission, then no other ninja would arrive, and if so, depending on who they were targeting, it would determine the full scope of the mission. 
Tazza would have no choice but to come clean, saying that the mission was far greater than the pay grade that he had asked for, but that his village were so desperate for money and so low on funds that he had no choice. While Kakashi would be tempted to turn back around, his students would still look determined to continue, and as such, Kakashi would also agree. However, they would have to stop and cut out some of the blood within Sakura's arm, as the kunai that she had been cut with were laced with poison. Once bandaging Sakura, they would continue and make their way to the Land of Waves, learning more about its situation. Learning of the one named Gato, who had plunged the land into chaos and disorder, robbing it of its funds. Thus, why Tazuna were building the bridge in the first place. Something that could bring in commerce and trade, allowing the village to prosper financially and finally be free from under the rule of Gato. Knowing that that were the reason why Gato wanted his life. As they would continually make their way through the trekking forest of the Land of Waves, heading to Tazuna's homeland, they would soon stop as they would see something rustling in the woods, Naruto pulling out his kunai and throwing it to see what it was. However, he would be shocked to see that it were not an enemy, but rather a bunny. However, this bunny's fur were rather odd simply because it were white fur although it were springtime in the land. Kakashi noting that for a bunny to still have white fur during spring meant that it was raised indoors and most likely had an owner. Before they had any time to maul over the information, Kakashi would yell at his team to duck. The three would do so as a large blade would come flying over their heads and into the side of a tree where a tall man would stand on the blade itself, looking down at the three and recognizing their sensei as Kakashi, noting that his name was wanted in the bingo book. As he would step down, Kakashi would also recognize the masked swordsman, Zabuza Mamochi, demon of the hidden mist. Kakashi would tell his team to stand back, knowing that if he were going to win this fight, he would have to pull out all of the stops, as he would lift the headband covering his left eye. Satomi and Naruto would be shocked, seeing firsthand what Kakashi had kept hidden away. None other than a Sharingan. Kakashi would then engage with Zabuza just as before. Naruto could sense that Satomi, despite all of her bravado, were scared and afraid. She hadn't felt such killing intent and aura since the night of the massacre. No matter how hard you train, it's something that is nearly impossible to overcome. Kakashi would still his team's nerve, telling them not to give in, knowing that he was not going to let any of his comrades die. As he would continue with his fight against Zabuza, Believing that he had landed a critical blow, it would soon be revealed that Zabuza had sprung a trap, trapping Kakashi in the water prison jutsu, while Zabuza would create his very own water clone, who would go straight towards the Ginin, beating all three of them down and sending them flying in different directions, Naruto trying his best to hold them off as much as he could. Sakura would think that it would be best to retreat like Kakashi had said. However, Naruto would still persist and Satomi would not leave him. Sakura yelling at Satomi for not listening to Kakashi's orders, thinking that she were just trying to act all cool again. However, Satomi would look back to Sakura with a serious face, even with a hint of fear in her eyes. She would make it very clear that she were never going to abandon Naruto because she could never do that to her friend. As far as she were concerned, no matter how much of an idiot Naruto might be, he were still their comrade. And like Kakashi said, those who abandon their comrades are worse than scum. And Satomi had seen firsthand the scum of the earth, and she would never be anything like him. Sakura would also be taken aback by her own cowardice 
as much as she wanted to be the best Koinoichi, she knew that she couldn't afford to waver, even though she didn't want to. She would look to Satomi as they would see Naruto battling with Zabuza, who would knock him down over and over, even sending his headband flying, mocking the Ginning, telling them of what he had to do to become the Ginning of his village, knowing that they were just kids playing ninja. However, Naruto would show the most guts out of them all. As he would rush towards Zabuza once again, Satomi and Sakura and even Kakashi, Tazna, all of them yelling at him to stop as he would be brushed aside once more. However, he had not been aiming for Zabuza. He had gone to grab his headband as he tied it back to his head. He would take a deep breath before looking to him, addressing him as the freak with no eyebrows, making his claim to put into his bingo book, the shinobi, that would become the Hokage of the village hidden in the leaves. That his name was Naruto Uzumaki and that he never backs down from a fight. With that, Naruto would regroup with Satomi and Sakura and he would ask if they could follow him in his plan. While the two would look uneasy, they would both agree to do so. With that, Naruto would spring his plan into motion. First, he would send an army of shadow clones, pouring them all upon the water clone itself, buying enough time for Sakura and Satomi to enact the second stage of their plan. As the Naruto clones would charge at Zabuza, Satomi and Sakura would perform their signature jutsu. Sakura with the wire style water bullet and Satomi with the fire style fireball jutsu. The two jutsus joining together to create a thick form of steam and mist, hard to see through. As Naruto would reach into his back pocket of his backpack, he would pull out a demon wing shuriken, throwing it to Satomi. Upon feeling it, knowing exactly what Naruto wanted to do, would already know and would enact the third stage of the plan as she would throw the demon wing shuriken. Sakura would be shocked at how effortlessly Naruto and Satomi worked together as a team. Even without speaking to one another, their teamwork was flawless. As Satomi would throw the demon wing shuriken through the mist, Zabuza wondering if they were aiming for the clone. The shuriken would come out of the mist heading straight towards him. He would catch it in his hand believing that he would not fall for such cheap tricks. However, thanks to the cover of the mist, covering the shadow of the second shuriken hiding in the first, Zabuza would barely have time to dodge the second one, nearly jumping as it grazed his leg. As he looked around, Unaware that the shuriken that passed him had turned into Naruto. Naruto would empty the clip of his patch, throwing as many shuriken as possible at Zabuza. Zabuza now being forced to let go, his right arm being pierced by two kunai as he would turn back around angered and injured, weaving his hand signs once again. He were preparing to send the water style wire dragon jutsu to pierce Naruto directly. Naruto would begin weaving his own hand signs to perform the air style air bullet. However, before the wind dragon and the water dragon could engage one another in combat, Kakashi would stop Zabuza, his eye now being inflared with the Sharingan as he would start to beat on the Miss Chuni, thanking his students for a job well done, but telling them to stay out of the fight and that he would finish it from here. With that, the fight would continue, just as it had in canon, and Kakashi would once again have Zabuza pent down to the tree. However, before Zabuza would have a chance to be killed by Kakashi, the Sinbon would be shot through his neck, and the masked tracker ninja would appear once again, 
thanking them for the assistance in taking down Zabaza as he would take the body to be destroyed in a private area. As the Tracker Ninja and Zabaza would leave, Kakashi would collapse from his Sharingan exhaustion, and Team 7 along with Tazna would help carry him back to Tazna's home. With this, not much would change from the original story. Kakashi would still be bedridden for about a week. However, Zabuza taking a little more damage than in the original timeline would need an additional few more days rest. In the meantime, Kakashi would still come to the same conclusion as before, noting that Zabuza and the Tracker Ninja were most likely working together, and that Zabuza were still alive. With that, Team 7 would have to train and get themselves up to speed. However, with a few more extra days to get some training in, this would prove to be beneficial to the team as a whole. They would still go to perform the tree walking exercise. Sakura showing off her genius and excellence in chakra control, making it all the way to the top effortlessly, while Satomi would struggle to make it halfway. And Naruto, even with his improved chakra control, only made a fourth of the tree up before falling back down to the ground and hitting his head. Sakura would laugh and boast for a bit, however Kakashi wouldn't be finished with her just yet, knowing that he had something planned for her, but she were going to need to build up her strength reserves. When Sakura asked Kakashi what he meant by that, Kakashi would explain that the reason for her perfect chakra control wasn't just due to her own genius, it was also due to the fact that she had such a low chakra reserves that there wasn't much to control in the first place, knowing that the more chakra and strength one had, the more refined the control needed to be. Hearing this would make a lot more sense to both Naruto and Satomi. Naruto especially since now he had a good understanding why using regular ninjutsu didn't work for him. It was the nine-tailed fox that were sealed within him. That massive amount of chakra, it was a lot harder to control, especially when mixed with his own. For Satomi, she actually wore this as a badge of honor, knowing that if she had that much strength within her, it meant she had that much more to control, and that Sakura only made it all the way to the top because she had such little strength, which explained why when they sparred, Sakura wasn't much of a match for her because ultimately, Sakura did not have the strength to back up her talent. Sakura would be most angered by this than anyone, feeling as if despite having an edge over the Uchiha finally, her ego had come crashing back down to earth. With that, Kakashi would give Sakura a second job. Since she could make it all the way to the top, she were to do sprints up and down the tree until she couldn't feel her legs anymore. With that, he would leave them to their own devices and they would all begin their own individual trainings. Naruto working his way up the tree slowly, while Satomi would be making more progress, Sakura being run ragged as she would feel the callus beginning to form in her feet from doing sprints up and down the tree non-stop feeling her muscle fibers beginning to break and reform. It were slow, but the strength were starting to come to her, and soon she could run up the trees and down with far more ease, not being too exhausted day by day. As the shinobi continued to train, they would meet Tazuna's family as well, his daughter and his grandson, Inari. Inari were not a fan of the ninja, and he would make it abundantly clear. Naruto, however, would not have much in way of dealing with the Nari, going as far as to yell at him for being a coward, even after learning of Inari's story. Satomi would actually be the one to go and speak with Inari next, as she would explain how Naruto grew up without a family. She could understand the pain of losing someone close to him, but Satomi would also state that she too had lost her family, but that even still, she still had Naruto in her life, 
and she were grateful for that. She would tell Inari that he should be grateful for the bonds that he does have, for the people who are in his life, and he should never take that for granted, and he should hold on and fight for that, as he never knows when one day it might be taken from him. Slowly over the tree walking exercises, Naruto would finally decide to ask Sakura for help. This would rub Satomi the wrong way a little as deep within she didn't like the idea of Naruto asking Sakura of all people for assistance. However, Sakura's assistance would prove to be helpful, even so much that the Uchiha girl would have to swallow her pride and ask for help as well although Sakura would be a lot more hesitant in helping her out. The two would argue and bicker for a bit, but eventually Sakura would give her a tip that could aid her in the exercise, and soon Team 7 would all be able to make it up and down the tree. With that, Kakashi would then decide to have them spar individually, rotating whenever they weren't doing shifts guarding the bridge. And for Sakura, he had something that he wanted her to learn, especially. Making a shadow clone before going to show Sakura her own special training exercise. Meanwhile, Naruto and Satomi when they had the free time would both confront Ita Kakashi, asking him the truth behind the Sharingan. Kakashi knew this was going to come, so he didn't bother trying to hide it. He would give them a brief explanation, telling them the story of Obito Uchiha, explaining the meaning as to why he instructed them in teamwork exercises. Once learning of the story and finding it plausible, they would be satisfied with the answer and would thank Kakashi for being honest. As Team 7 continued their training, Naruto choosing to stay out one day a little extra longer. He would run into someone who were picking herbs in the field. From his point of view, it would appear to be a young and beautiful girl. She would introduce herself as Haku. Naruto being happy to meet someone new here, he would explain that he were a shinobi and he were training to get stronger. Haku would ask why Naruto trained. Naruto stating that he trained to be as great as he could be, and to also protect his friends. Haku would then remark that training to protect someone precious is what can make someone truly strong. Naruto taking this to heart as Haku would leave, before clearing up that one mishap, stating that he were in fact not a girl, but a boy, shocking Naruto more ways than one. After the week and a half had passed, soon Team 7 were fully healthy and back to full strength. Naruto had overdone it and had chosen to sleep in that day, Kakashi letting his young blonde haired student rest as the others would move on ahead. As they made their way to the bridge, they would find that all of the other bridge workers had been taken out, and standing across from them, were none other than the masked Shinobi and Zabuza, fully healed and ready for round two. As round two were going to begin, Zabuza would try to gain the upper hand, creating 12 water clones, believing that their intimidation would be more than enough to scare off the Genin. However, to his shock, both Sakura and Satomi had gotten far more stronger Showing off the fruits of their training, each girl would effortlessly take out six clones apiece, leaving them lame, surprising Zabuza with how effective they had become in such a short time. Haku would step forward, deciding to go up against Satomi. The two would engage in one-on-one -on -one combat, while Sakura would stand back in assistance looking over in the battlefield while Kakashi would engage with Zabuza once more. As Naruto would have woken up rather late, he would rush over to the bridge once realizing that he had overslept. However, before leaving, he would have a talk with Inari, apologizing for before, 
instead showing a bit of a soft side, stating that he knew Inari could become really strong, and that he just had to have more faith in himself. He would give him two of his shuriken, telling him that if a situation arose, to simply throw them, and that he would take care of the rest. With that, Naruto would rush to the battlefield, Gato's men would still arrive and attempt to kidnap his daughter and hold her hostage, and Inari would still attempt to fend them off, just as in canon. And thus, Naruto's shuriken would transform into clones, who would effortlessly take out the hired men, before leaving Inari and the others. As Naruto would make his way towards the battlefield, seeing just how the battle had changed, Satomi, with her speed and precision, keeping up much more with Haku than Sasuke had in the original timeline, would force Haku to have to try much, much harder, more so that he would bring out his crystal ice mirrors even sooner. While Satomi's Sharingan were effective, they were still only one Tomoe, and in the end there was only so much speed the one Tomoe gave her. Naruto, recognizing that Satomi were on the back foot in the fight, would rush inside of the ice prison, attempting to aid his comrade. However, Satomi would simply scold Naruto for rushing in so half-cocked, telling him that it would have been smarter to attack from the outside. Naruto, now realizing his mistake, that now left two trapped within Haku's ice mirrors. As the fight would continue once more, Naruto and Satomi would attempt to use their teamwork to their advantage. Even within the ice mirrors and being pierced by Simbon, they would prove to still be more than effective. Sakura would also be showing her own usefulness, as she would try to aid Kakashi in his fight against Zabuza. However, that would be easier said than done. However, Kakashi had a plan a plan that involved Sakura, but she would need to play her role at the right time. As Kakashi would take the cuts and the damage from Zabuza's blade, who was now using an even thicker mist to blind the Sharingan, Kakashi, unknown, would decide to create a Shadow Clone himself, who would be burrowing under the bridge using the Headhunter Jutsu. Zabuza would not be aware of the clone's whereabouts until it were too late. As he would be going in for an assault, the clone would appear from under him pulling his feet down into the ground of the bridge. As Zabuza found himself slipping, Sakura would launch a water style water dragon jutsu, pouring everything she had into the attack. Zabuza being forced to use his blade on the defense as the wire jutsu would prove to be rather strong, not enough to do much damage, but still hard to evade. While he were busy trying to fend off the wire dragon, Kakashi would come from behind, delivering a devastating blow to Zabuza's back, nearly breaking him and sending him to the ground, as Zabuza would be forced on the retreat once again as Kakashi would be preparing the final stages of his attack, now with a much more injured and crippled Zabuza, making sure that he wouldn't be able to move. Meanwhile, inside of the ice prison, Naruto and Satomi would be on their last legs. Despite their massive improvements, it seemed as though Haku were now starting to take this much more serious, and it would only be by a matter of time before the two would be taken out. As Haku would look at the two, determining ultimately that the Uchiha would be much more dangerous and was the one who was slowing down the quickest, he would decide to launch his attacks, pinning all of them on Satomi. However, that had not been the true extent of his plan. His actual goal was to take out Naruto, but this would be much more effective. Launching a full assault of Simbon at Satomi, Satomi feeling that she were at the limits of her abilities, Naruto would see this and rush towards her, pushing her out of the way as his body were pierced all over with Simbon. 
as he could feel himself bleeding from within. He would crash to the ground in silence. Satomi rushing over to Naruto's side, she would attempt to pull them out, trying to keep Naruto alive. However, it would feel as if it were being too late, as Naruto were slowly starting to lose consciousness. He would look to Satomi, as he would tell her that everything were going to be all right. Satomi's eyes began to well up with tears, as the only thing she could think of was the night of the massacre, the night that she thought she had almost lost Naruto. It wasn't supposed to end here, this wasn't how things were supposed to be. As Naruto's eyes would slowly close, Haku, even he himself grieving over Naruto, praising him for being a true shinobi, Satomi would simply tell Haku to shut up, as her eyes were now glowing a dark red. Her Sharingan now morphed into two Tomoe each. She would show no mercy to the mass ninja. As she would slowly sit down Naruto, she would look up to Haku. Disappearing in a flash, Haku attempting to jump to another mirror, but before he could do so, Satomi was already in front of him, kicking him in the face and sending him flying through one of the ice mirrors. Satomi's strength had now increased tenfold, and she were not going to forgive the masked ninja for what he had done. She would continue to beat on him mercilessly, with no remorse, shooting every fire style jutsu she had in her arsenal. Haku creating ice walls to try to fend off the ice, but they would be incinerated. As Satomi would beat down on the masked ninja mercilessly, over and over again. Haku would attempt to run, but before he could do so, he would be stopped by Satomi, who would just continue her assault, her broken heart bleeding in her attacks, as she would beat on Haku, until eventually shattering the mask and leaving him broken. Satomi would pull out her kunai in an attempt to finish off Haku once and for all. However, as she were preparing to finish off Haku, Zabuza were about to be killed himself, as Kakashi had trapped him using his summoning hounds and was preparing to send his lightning blade through his chest. Haku realized that now as a broken tool, the only thing that he could do of any use to Zabuza was to give his own life. Using whatever strength he had left, he would throw smoke bombs at Satomi, who would come rushing at him with a kunai in hand, slowing her momentum just enough to move her out of the way and using every bit of his strength to make it to Zabuza's side. As he would arrive, however, it would be too late. Kakashi had built up too much momentum with his lightning blade, even more so. With Haku in an even more damaged state, and Zabuza also worse for wear, the two would both be skewered by the lightning blade, as Kakashi's arm went far more deeper, piercing them both in the heart, killing them instantly, as the two would collapse to the ground. As Kakashi would look down upon the corpses, he would look over the bridge to see if his comrades were all right. However, the only thing that both he and Sakura could see would be Satomi, sitting and cradling Naruto within her arms. As she did so, Sakura would be the first to walk over towards them she would see a different side of Satomi, something she thought she would never see. Satomi would be shedding tears, shedding tears over Naruto. Her cold and quiet demeanor had now changed, and she looked as though she were a frightened little girl. 
Sakura would also be horrified to think that Naruto had died, as the two would sit side by side with their fallen comrade, holding him and even shedding tears together in a brief moment of solidarity. Kakashi now worried that he had lost another comrade, and even worse, the son of his master. Just as that moment, there would be a tap on the bridge as Gato and his thugs had now arrived to ransack the village. Kakashi, with just a little bit of chakra, would walk forward. Gato remarking that he couldn't depend on Shinomi for anything, as he would continue to mock both Haku and Zabuza, disparaging their names and mocking the way of the Shinobi. This form of disrespect would not stand, even for Satomi. As she would slowly arise, she and Kakashi would stand together, their Sharingan activated. Neither would say a word, for they knew what needed to be done. With that, they would move in a blur, in tandem taking out the men on the bridge, until eventually Gato would be left alone. Gato would attempt to run away. However, before he could do so, Satomi would attempt to finish him off. However, Kakashi would pull her back as he knew full and well what needed to be done, and he did not want to burden her heart with something so heinous. With that, Kakashi would quickly and swiftly bring Gato's life to an end. And with that, the terror that had befallen the land of waves had now been lifted. As Sakura would be sitting next to Naruto's body, still looking upon her fallen comrade, he would slowly start to cough, seeming as though life had returned to him. Yelling over to Satomi, she would rush back to Naruto's side immediately. Naruto slowly opening his eyes to see Satomi looking down upon him. She would only smile as tears of joy would come down her cheeks, pulling Naruto into a hug and calling him an idiot for being so reckless. Kakashi couldn't help but smile as well, recovering his Sharingan as he walked over to the bodies of both Zabuza and Haku. As snow would fall upon the bridge, it would look as if tears had fallen from both of their eyes to see that their ambition, their dreams, and their lives had come to an end. Maybe in the end, their life and death could have been as pure as the snow that fell upon the bridge. From there, Naruto would recover his strength, telling them that he must have been knocked out for a while, but that for the most part, he felt completely fine. He would learn of the masked ninja's identity as Haku, and he would tell them of his own experience meeting him in the forest just a few days before. Knowing that in the end, Haku must have been holding back the whole time, and thus was the reason why he was still alive. Out of respect, on their way home, they would give Zabuza and Haku a proper burial. As Kakashi would remark that this were often the way of the shinobi, to use and be used. While they tried to fight it, in the end, they were often seen as nothing more than tools. Naruto, however, would be even more determined, wanting to fight this fate, to create a world where a shinobi life could have more meaning. This was the world that he envisioned. It was one of the reasons why he wanted to be Hokage. He didn't want to die in vain but rather he wanted his life to be a life worth living for, and even more so, a worth dying for. As they would continue to walk and make their way home, Satomi would ask Naruto if anything had happened while he were unconscious. Naruto would give a brief rundown, 
stating that while he had passed out, he thought that he had indeed died, but instead, he had actually come face to face with the being that had been within him. Satomi would look worried, but she would tell Naruto to tell them when they got home, and he planned to do so. He would tell her of his meeting with the nine-tailed fox. And this will conclude What If Sasuke Uchiha Was a Girl, Naruto Yokai Part 3. As always, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, share, and hit that bell for post notifications so you can stay up to date on everything that is Power Core Productions and Podcastings that is to come out now and in the future. But without further ado, that's going to do it for the end of this video. I'm Javon Harrington with Power Core Productions and Podcastings. Signing off. And I'll see you next time.